G'day guys and gal. Space Marines are described as having genius level intellect, being able to quickly assess and react to complex situations on the fly. So you would think that a chapter of Space Marines who have a lot of advanced prosthetics and hectic mechanical prowess would own this mantle of intelligence. But, but, but no, no, that they don't at all. The Iron Hands are extremely retarded, delusional and unlikable. It's like having autism but you take out the funny parts and replace them with prosthetics. On top of this, they are extremely literal. Their Primarch's name is Ferris Manus, which is Latin for Hands of Iron, as he had Iron Hands. Despite their questionable grasp on common sense and reality, the Iron Hands make for an interesting and unique bunch of marines that do have their moments and it's a shame that they have been so mistreated in the lore. Before we get started, remember when I announced that upcoming Warhammer 40k mod for Squad called Knights of Aurelian Parabellum, which was shaping up to be the greatest FPS Warhammer experience available? Well, I have good news. Parabellum has joined forces with Chaptermaster Valrock's Death and Duty mod to create a Super Warhammer 40k mod called Eternal Vengeance, with some of the most talented modders working on it out there. The team includes programmers, animators, artists, 3D modelers, map editors, sound designers and more. The intention to detail has been crazy as well. If you play as a space marine then you can kill people by sprinting into them if you build up enough speed. And they've also hacked the game engine and figured out how to make dual wielding a thing. Meaning if you play as a commissar you can use a sword and las pistol simultaneously. We're actually still debating if we should allow commissars to team kill coward guardsmen without penalty. But I'm leaning towards a yes, cause it's funny. The mod is not yet done, but if you want to keep up to date with it, then either join my Discord or the Eternal Vengeance Discord, where updates are posted regularly. If you yourself have experience with modding such as programming or animating, then shoot me a message and you could end up getting involved with the project. Once this mod launches, I'll be hosting and streaming a lot of events for it, so get keen for that. Today we're exploring the lore and story of the Iron Hand Space Marine Legion and Chapter, as well as the life and death of their Primarch Ferris Manners. Hopefully by the end of this video you too can understand the absolute spurgatory that is the Iron Hands, as well as how Games Workshop did wrong when writing some of their lore. Let's get into it. When the Iron Hands were created, along with the other 19 legions and their various dysfunctional daddies by the Emperor of Mankind, they were not yet absolute dipshits. They were active during the Unification Wars and established themselves as a highly disciplined and effective legion, scoring big wins against the Orcs early in the Crusade and having a number of their tactics studied and incorporated into the smarter legions out there. However, if there is one legion out there which are not used as poster boys or marketing material by Games Workshop, it's the Iron Hands. Hence, they didn't do too much exciting until the discovery of their Primarch, Ferris. So when the Emperor created his multicultural children from his god tier sperm, he intended for them to become his warlords and generals. Both the Chaos Gods and these god children's mother weren't keen on that happening, hence they worked together to scatter the Primarchs across the galaxy. Some Primarchs landed on their planets without too much fuss and were found pretty shortly after. Other Primarchs fucking jetted hard into their planets like some kind of hectic meteor and destabilized the planet's tectonic plates. Ferris was in the latter category. His gestation capsule crashed into the planet called Medusa and leveled a mountain, causing planet-wide earthquakes. Now, I do have to mention that a lot of Ferris's exploits, including his hectic landing, seem like fantasy and legend. The feats he achieved in his early years were unbelievable, even by the standards of a Primarch. He swam to the bottom of an ocean, carried a mountain range on his back across an island, climbed to the highest peak of the world. Even the fact that he nearly jihaded his planet when he lands seems a bit extreme. But whatever, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. Now being the equivalent of a Dragon Ball Z character made Ferris pretty famous on his planet and all the tribes revered him and looked up to him. In turn, he allowed and even encouraged them to keep killing each other so that only the strongest would survive. Ferris was strong, but he was also a bit of a dick. He sought greater challenges, so he travelled to the equivalent of Mount Doom and fought a gigantic metal dragon. Now this metal dragon actually seemed to have been an extremely powerful experimental necron construct or even a Catan shard, so when Ferris drowns it in a lake of molten lava, the metal from the dragon encased his hands and entered into his dick hole, giving him these living metal iron hands. His eyes also went silver and he gained incredible knowledge in technology and forging. When he returned to the tribes of Medusa, he was a genuine god to them, and he shared all of his knowledge with them in hopes they could make cooler weapons in which to kill each other with. Ferris was one of the first Primarchs to be found, and his meeting with the Emperor was actually one of the most interesting. When the Emperor landed on each Primarch's planet, some were rude to him, others metaphorically sucked his cock, but none, save Ferris, fought him. 
Ferris saw a challenger that could give him a true test, hence the two engage in some multi-day anime tier fight in which the world once again nearly exploded. Man, if Ferris was half this strong when he fought Fulgrim then I'm pretty sure that flamboyant cock gobbler would be the one without the head. Ferris was so impressed by the fight he received from his daddy that he pledged his allegiance to him now and always. Medusa came under Imperial control and became the home world of the Iron Hands Legion. However, Ferris is a dick and made sure that the quality of life did not improve as he wanted the planet to remain hardy. He reshaped the Iron Hands to be a perfect extension of himself, allowing his sons to climb the ladder of command through kicking their brothers off it with force. With such a hardcore demeanor and no room for bullshit, it would turn out to be a pretty big surprise that Ferris's closest friend turned out to be Fulgrim. It seems all you need to be friends with the Primarch is an ego that matches theirs. Ferris and Fulgrim found themselves in the Imperial Forge at the same time and instantly started measuring their dicks, both proclaiming that they could produce a better weapon than the other. They worked the forges for weeks, even months without pause, giving them enough time to have some solid banter and get over themselves. By the time they had finished forging, Ferris had created a legendary flaming sword, whilst Fulgrim had created a mighty warhammer. This contest, born of ego, instead bred humility as each Primarch declared the other one as the winner and they exchanged weapons. Nice. The Iron Hands and Ferris distinguished themselves during the Great Crusade, with Ferris being considered one of the most powerful and tactically brilliant Primarchs. Gilliman remarked that Ferris and his sons were in his top 4 best legions, whilst Horus said if Ferris had joined them in the Horus Heresy, the Emperor and the Loyalists wouldn't have had a chance. The Iron Hands were taught with tough love that all weakness should be despised, and failure should always be punished. Ferris loved his sons and they loved him. They even cut off their hands and replaced them with cybernetics for absolutely no good reason to show their literal devotion to him. Now teaching people that weakness and failure makes you pathetic and unworthy seems really unhealthy and psychologically damaging, which while it was, also made the Iron Hands virtually incorruptible. To embrace chaos was to embrace weakness, and weakness is not a vibe. Unfortunately, by the end of the Great Crusade, whilst the Iron Hands were a legion of absolute monsters and conquerors, they were also borderline soulless and resented themselves, beginning to believe that their flesh was weak and strength could only be found in turning themselves into machines. This is stupid because A, a space marine's flesh is definitely not weak, and B, what's the point in making someone a super soldier if they're just going to replace everything with metal? May as well just invest into making an army of fucking Skatari and calling it a day. Ferris grew to regret the way his legion had been shaped and vowed that when the Imperium was at peace, he would break down the Iron Hand's destructive attitude and remove the metal that encased his arms, despite the metal making him more powerful. The Iron Hand spent most of the Great Crusade fighting against technologically advanced humans or humanoid Xenos, as they were best suited to dealing with the dickheads who still held on to some spicy Dark Age of Technology weapons. Towards the end of the Great Crusade, Horus lost all his hair and decided to rebel against the Imperium as a result of this. He was able to turn Fulgrim, who was unknowingly carrying around a demon sword that was corrupting his soul, to his cause. He then said to Fulgrim, Yo, your boy Ferris, can you turn him? And Fulgrim was like, Darling, I can turn anyone. After Horus iterated that he wanted Ferris to turn to chaos, not to homosexuality, Fulgrim went off to talk to his brother. The conversation did not go well. Ferris was enraged that Fulgrim could be so weak and betray the Emperor, so he immediately attacked him. He broke Fulgrim's sword, the sword he made for him, in half. The explosion of that knocked Ferris out. Fulgrim could have killed Ferris then and there, but his love for his brother overcame the darkness in his soul, so he left. After this, Ferris was mad at times 10. He was super angry, and his massive metal dick shot up in glee when he received orders to go to Istvan with the Salamanders and Ravenguard to kill the traitors, Fulgrim included. Now I've talked about what happened on Isfan quite a lot on this channel, but I want to make it super clear that the Iron Hands had a, a terrible time there, probably the worst time out of everyone. When the Iron Hands, Salamanders and Raven Guard landed to fight the Lunar Wolves, Empress Children, World Eaters and Death Guard, they pretty much just charged on in and engaged in a hectic battle. Ferris tore through the traitor forces and carved a path all the way to Fulgrim, where the two Primarchs fought like titans. They equally traded blows, but it seemed like Ferris was winning and would have won if it weren't for Fulgrim using the power of the demon within his sword. Fulgrim, a Primarch not known for his strength, suddenly was stronger than Ferris, a Primarch whose strength was only surpassed by Vulcans. He used these strength hacks to block a killing strike from Ferris before he then sliced off his brother's head, killing the Primarch of the Iron Hands. 95% of the Iron Hands died that day, with only a small force escaping. Due to this, the Iron Hands would have a very limited role in the Horus Heresy from then on. 
doing whatever they could to sabotage the traders but not having any significant impact. Horus gets the terror, kills Sanguinius, turns the Emperor into a quadriplegic before he himself dies. The traders are beaten and pushed back to the Eye of Terror. Without their Primarch's guidance, the Iron Hands got a lot worse. Firstly, they begun to hate the Salamanders and Raven Guard because they blamed them for falling back instead of charging on Isvan, despite falling back being the more sensible decision at the time. Secondly, they decided that the Horus Heresy was the fault of the flesh. They saw that it was man's emotion that caused it, hence they worked to distance themselves from humanity. Thirdly, they decided that since the body of Ferris was never recovered, he was probably alive despite it being very, very obvious and clear that he was definitely dead. Everything that Ferris disliked about his legion and wanted to change got multiplied. The Iron Hands even moved to line themselves more with the Mechanicus, as they shared a love of toasters and unnecessarily replacing body parts with prosthetics. This all came to a head when, ironically, the thousands of years the Iron Hands had spent suppressing their emotions and extinguishing their own souls had allowed chaos to seep into them. This culminated in a battle where one third of the Iron Hands were mutated into chaotic abominations, whilst the remainder were attacked by demons and Emperor's children. One of the Iron Hand commanders realized that by suppressing their emotions, they had invited chaos in. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense, as chaos is explicitly stated to feed off emotions, but whatever. Hence, the Iron Hands turned off their emotion inhibitors and gave in to their rage, tearing the demons to shred and showing the Empress' children the true meaning of sodomization. This act of rage and violence would be instrumental in helping the Iron Hands realize that cutting off your own flesh, being dicks to everyone, and cosplaying as artificial intelligence is a pretty gay thing to do, hence setting them on a path to redemption and hopefully to end up where their Primarch had always intended. Now the issue with the Iron Hands and Ferris from a meta perspective isn't the fact that they aren't original or interesting, they are for sure. It's the fact that the Iron Hands have been hyped up and the reader has been told how great Ferris and his sons are, only for Ferris to die due to poor tactical decisions, and his legion ground into the dust. There are so many instances of everyone being like, ooh, watch out, Ferris is a beast, he's so awesome, then in reality, he seems like a short-tempered douchebag. Him dying at the start of the heresy, the heresy being the time for the Primax to shine, meant that he never really got much character development, and everything about him that has been added to the lore has been done so with the knowledge that he died so early. Don't get me wrong, his death was really impactful and good for the overall story, but it just means that no one really gives a fuck about the Iron Hands. Whenever I see someone paint an Iron Hand, I'm like, ooh, a new homebrew chapter, before I realize, oh wait, those are just the weird boys that mutilate themselves. I'm half joking about it, I can obviously identify Iron Hands models due to their distinctive Iron Hands, but you get my point. All these guys really need is a bit more time in the sun and a few key characters to come forward and distinguish themselves. Something that seems to start to happen more and more as a result of Games Workshop upping their care factor. I recently read an excerpt about a duel between an Iron Hand Marine and a Daemon of Slaanesh, and it was really well written, and it showed the robotic mindset and fighting style of the Iron Hand against the wild and emotional Slaaneshi slut. The Iron Hand wins by the way. And that does us for today guys, the Iron Hands and their Primarchs lore, as well as why no one really seems to give a fuck about them. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month gives you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more handy content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.